You're listening to Run, Are You Win? Revive Us Now podcast with Steve Gray. As pastor of the Smithton Outpouring and the Kansas City Revival, Steve is a leading voice of revival worldwide. Steve shares his life-changing encounters with God, along with biblical teaching that equips you to experience and lead lasting revival. Come, run with Steve and expect God to revive us now. Hello and welcome. I'm so glad you decided to join me today as we talk about revival, outpouring, renewal, power of God, presence of God, how we get that. And we need it. Our country needs it. I had a reporter ask me recently, uh, uh, no, not, uh, sometime in the past, that uh, they said, well, what is the alternative to revival if we don't have revival? And I said, the alternative to revival is the unthinkable. And right now in the United States of America, we need to have uh, the, the, the things of God renewed, the word of God renewed, the presence of God renewed in our churches. So it's just not empty religion. Well, today we're going to talk about what could be stopping revival. And uh, there's so many things. I mean, there's so many hindrances to revival. People don't pray. People don't repent. People don't want it. They don't want a powerful God to mix you know, mix up their life, anything. Many, many hindrances. But today I want to talk one that is a major one that sometimes people don't really want to talk about, okay? So what could be stopping revival? Could it be us? Could it be something the church or churchgoers, Bible readers, people that, you know, are, are, are talking the talk of revival? We've got a lot of talk about it. But what could be a hindrance of it? And most people don't realize that they could be hindering it and not even know they're hindering it, and still they talk the talk, lots of talk about it. So let's do that. Let's, let's uh, go into the Philippians chapter 3, and we'll use Paul as our example, Paul from the Bible. And he said there in Philippians 3.13, but one thing I do, one thing I do. Now, when he means one thing, that doesn't mean the only thing he does. He's talking about all the things going on in his life as he looks back on his past, and what he'd been doing, he said, this one thing I do, I forget what is behind. I'm going to forget what's behind me. So this is a great lesson. I mean, Paul is a great example. We use him for many, many things to help us walk this thing out. And so Paul said, this one thing I do, I forget what is behind. So let's take a minute and think about what was Paul trying to forget? Well, wait a minute. Maybe we'll talk about what we're trying to forget first. All right. So here it is. Our culture and his culture just don't match very well. You see, in, in, in his culture, the culture of the first century, they obviously had pagans. But the majority of the pagans were God believers and God fearers. They just had the wrong God. <laughs> and all you had to do to, was convince them you need to turn from that God that's not a God to this God who is the one and true God. And so you're getting religious people that already, you know, practice something gods to turn to the living God. And so it's a whole lot different than what we're up against. What are we up against? We're up against people who don't care about God. They don't have a care. They don't have a heart. They don't have a, a, a you know, a, a really their spirits are separated by paganism. But our paganism is a no God <laughs> because we make ourselves God. Our, our God is humanity. It's hum, humanism. And so it's a lot different to get somebody who has no intention of serving God, no concern about any God except themselves, to all of a sudden give their entire life over to Jesus Christ and the one true God. So Paul didn't have that. Paul just had to get them to switch gods. I, I, I'm not saying it was any easier. It's just different. And so here Paul is. He's, he's trying to forget. What are we trying to forget, though, in our culture, the pagan culture a lot of us came from, or the non-God-fearing, non-caring about what God thinks culture. And so we come to, to Jesus then, and we become Christians. We start going to church, and we all have a past, and we're trying to you know forget certain things. But most of us are trying to forget our mistakes. We're trying to forget uh, stupid stuff we did. Uh, some people, maybe it's drugs or just uh, TV or pornography or whatever, and they, they just know these are things from my past or uh, uh, bad relationships, whatever, and I need, to, I need to forget those things. Those things are wounding me. My past is wounding me today, and I need to forget about it. Well, certainly you do, and uh, 
the Holy Spirit's got the power to help you to do it. But that's not what Paul was talking about. And I found out that past sins, past mistakes, stupid things we did have no power to stop revival. In fact, they can feed the desire for revival. But Paul said he's got one thing he wants to do, and he's got something that he needs to forget. And it wasn't bad choices. It wasn't mistakes. It wasn't sins according to the way he was living. He might have looked back and said, hey, what I was doing was a mistake. But while he's doing it, he had to rid himself of, of, of something. So, so we know what we're trying to forget, all our bad choices and bad past. But what was Paul trying to forget? Because he's, did you know he said his past was perfect? Yeah. So we, we hear testimonies. I was this and I was that and I was bad. And I, but Paul said, I was perfect. I was faultless and full of zeal for God. So in other words, he, he was a perfect Jew practicing religion, believing in God, had a fear for God, uh, wanted to serve God. Here's a guy wanting to serve God. So you think, well, what's there to forget about that? Well, that's what he said he had to do because after meeting Jesus, really meeting him, he said, all my religion that I did, and I don't know if I'd go this far, he really went ways. And he said, I just call it all garbage. It's just garbage. All the stuff. Now, his, when we look at his foundation in the Bible, I don't call it that because, I mean, he knew the Bible. He knew the Old Testament, which built the foundation of the new. But, but he means his, tra his training and his thinking, the way he thought about it. And he said, it, it's all garbage. And so we find out that what he's trying to forget is not, you know, I was a drug user or I, I just got hooked on video games or whatever. No, he's trying to get loose from his religious past. Imagine that, because that's what was hindering him. His religious past was what was hindering him from a spiritual future. And that's where we go today. So many of us, uh, you know, don't understand how locked in we are to a religious past that's, that's really hindering us uh, from our future. So when Paul says, I had to forget my past, he's having to forget all the religion. In our, in our case, we'd have to maybe say all the Sunday school, all the stuff I did, all the things I was taught about God. That And, and some people, it's like uh, the power of God is bad or the power of God ended with the apostles speaking in tongues is of the devil. Uh, we don't want to show emotionalism. We just And you went to a church where people just sort of stood there and mumbled in the songs and didn't say anything. They just sit there, you know, because they don't want to disturb God, you know. <laughs> and so... And, and, and so we don't have the same. I'm not Jewish, so I don't have the same background as Paul. But I got enough religion in me to know that if I stay with all that, I'm going to be stuck because I need to break free and get free from the past that's holding me hostage, religion that's holding me hostage. And so my religion of the past, got, it got in my way. I'll tell you. I'm crying out for revival. <laughs> oh, God, I want revival. And I'd pray about it, of course. And I'd go over to the church, you know, and nobody would be there but me. And I'd go on to a pew. And I'd you guess what I did? I'd kneel down and close my eyes, bury my head into my arms, and pray. And uh, that's, I thought I was praying, you know. And I was uh, trying to shut out everything and just focus. But... When when the freedom of God came, I wouldn't. I, I I I I was. My arms were up. My face was up. My smile was up. My eyes were on fire for God. You know, just beaming, beaming for God. And I realized uh, how much I needed to be delivered from my religion that was holding me captive, and taking away all the energy and all the strength that I should use uh, for God. So it's the same today. You know, there's all that revival talk, but few of us might understand how religion is getting in, in the way. It might be fear. It might be unbelief. I know a lot of people around our country, they're talking religion, but then they go back to doing it. The same church or the same ministry, even if it's an evangelistic street ministry, whatever, they're just doing what they're doing, saying we need revival, we need revival, and then nothing changes, though. And they need, and they need we need to change, whether it be unbelief or whatever. But many, of their, many folks are, are stuck in their religious ways. And if God's going to do anything, then we're going to have to get beyond the way you were raised, beyond the way your denomination did it. 
or does it? The way you learned it as a kid, like I did, you know, I shined my shoes on Saturday night and went in church and sat, you know, that was it. And I did, did my thing, but I didn't ever meet the living God. I didn't ever have the power and presence of God in my life. And uh, so what, we, what we're up against is God is wanting to do something mighty in our churches, in our nation, in your life, in your home. I mean, a, a real God thing, but we're stuck on the way we were raised. We're stuck in our denominational ways or worse yet, we're stuck in what makes us comfortable. We want to be comfortable. We want revival, but make it a comfortable revival, right? Now, uh, it, you know, uh, it, it says the disciples were in the boat one day, and Jesus comes walking on the water, and they think he's a ghost. And it's a long story of why they thought he was a ghost, you know, but it's not a ghost. It's Jesus. Well, they didn't know. They didn't know. And when Jesus talks about their faith, he says, you know why you didn't know who I was? He said, because you didn't understand the loaves and fishes. You remember that miracle, the loaves and fishes. You didn't understand the loaves and fishes the day before. He said, you missed me yesterday and didn't understand what I was doing. So then when I come with this tremendous miracle of walking on the water, you miss it again. You see, if you don't get what God's doing now, you're not going to get what he's doing tomorrow. If you're in unbelief now, if you're in doubt now, if you don't care now, how are you going to get anything for tomorrow? And that's what they did. They missed yesterday. What they missed yesterday caused them to miss what God was doing uh, today. So we got to make sure our, our past religion is not getting in the way of our future religion that God wants to do. So Paul said, I forget one thing, forgetting what is behind, and I'm going to strain forward. I'm going to strain forward. It's a strain. It's hard to break all that religious stuff off, off of you. You know, you're used to going to a church. That, like I said, they, you just uh, mumble a few songs and three songs and sit down and listen to a sermon. Well, have an offering, listen to a sermon, and you're out in an hour. And the move of God, you, the spirit of God doesn't wear a watch. And you just got to let God begin to move. But, you know, you, you don't know what to do. You don't know how. So we got to strain forward. We got to look, look and say, I cannot be stuck in it. God's not going to do a denominational revival for me so I can be comfortable with this great move of God to save America. He's going to do what he wants to do, and I better be ready for it. So, so uh, I, I got to strain forward and and reconsider that God gets to do church his way now, do church his way. Now, when I say that, you know, we got to press a hold and, and uh, get out there and, and uh, uh, do things God's way. And all of a sudden people think, okay, well, uh, if we're going to do church God's way, we, we can't have a building anymore. You know, we can't sing and we don't need a band. And so next thing you know, there's a group of people sitting out on the shore, some pond somewhere, stroking, stroking you know, just one guitar saying, this must be church. Listen, changing locations, changing locations is not a revival. Changing locations doesn't change you. Changing locations is okay, but we could stay right where we are and be in our buildings if we just be changed and transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit and become a new wineskin. Paul said this. Did you know what Paul said? I want to grab hold of the reason Jesus grabbed hold of me. And many people don't get Jesus trying to grab hold of you, all right, and, you, and you're thankful for that, and I am too. But why did he grab you? And uh, was it just so you just go to our service and sit, sing a few songs, sit down and leave? No. And so, uh, you know, the Bible teaches us, Jesus taught us that we can't put new wine into an old wine skin because both still burst and it's, it's just a mess and wine ends up on the ground. So, so it doesn't mean we, we got to get out of our church buildings. It doesn't mean we can't have a choir. It doesn't mean we don't have sermons. It, all the stuff that people are trying to change to do church right makes no difference because the change is not what we do in church. The change is, is the people that are sitting in church. If they change, church will change. <laughs> but we need a transformation, not a change of location. So we got to get this mental bondage of how this is supposed to be done because we're not going to have a denominational revival. We're not going to have your way of revival. God's not going to do something to make you comfortable. In fact, what he does might make you really uncomfortable, but you got to want it more than you want to be comfortable. And I got there, I'm telling you, my life, you know, my heart just broke over what was happening in the church and in lives. And I thought, is this 
this. You know, it, it's, it's, it's no fun being in the ministry is what I was thinking. You know, it's really tough. And uh, so I started thinking, maybe I, maybe God's want me to do some, something else. But you know what? Then I changed. Yeah, God changed me, I should say. And I got rid of the mental bondage of how we're supposed to be and how we're supposed to act. And really, the best part about it is God let me be me. And, and you know, God, people say, God just used me. But then when they go to church, it's not, they're not me anymore. They're, they're doing everything, you know, just locked up. And you're afraid, you, you know, maybe in some churches, oh, you can't, oh, you can't raise your hands here. They'll, you can't speak in tongues here. They'll kick you out. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of place is that, you know? And so we get in this mental bondage saying, oh, God, God, move all you want to as long as you do it on Sunday morning the way our church does it. Well, you already know that's not going to work. And so, so we need to, you know, all of a sudden we need to realize I need to be delivered from my religious past. It's got me all locked up. It's got me full of fear that it might be the devil or I might, you know, displease God. I doubt if he'll do it today. And, and so what, let me tell you something. Your past is not sacred. Your past is it. Leave it, as Paul said, and let's get, let's get filled with the Holy Spirit. Let's let God begin to do what he wants to do. Let's stop being afraid that God's going to trick us or, or, or uh, you know, we're going to be off into something strange and just trust God to give us a future. If we can get delivered from our past, I believe we can step in to a bright future and see the outpouring and power of God come and rescue us, our homes, our children. Oh, God, save our children from this mental torment they're going through in our country. Save us, Lord, that we can have a move of God that strikes our world, our nation, our church, and our families in the name of of Jesus. So we're continuing to pray. So glad you will run with us, right? You're running for revival. And we're continuing to pray that, oh God, break open the heavens and come down. Well, until next time, see you. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to the Revive Us Now podcast with Steve Gray. Push the subscribe button so you don't miss an episode and spread the word on social media. For more episodes and resources, go to reviveusnowpodcast.com. Until next time, keep on running for revival.